Hey folks, welcome to module two. In this module, our expert will cover search advertising campaigns on Google. So get ready to take some notes and let's jump right in. All right, so when we first create a Google ad campaign, we're going to be asked to choose a goal. Now, a goal is not a campaign type or an ad type. There's several different types. In fact, if you hover over, you'll see under each one down here, there's several types of campaign types or types of ads that can correspond with these goals. The whole purpose of choosing a goal is so that Google knows by what metric, by what measure you're going to judge the success of your campaign. What are you really going after here? Do you want people to buy things? That would be sales. Do you want people to opt in and, and build a, a list? That would be leads. Website traffic. All you care about is clicks and visitors to a web property. Product and brand consideration here, just encouraging people to look further at your offerings. Uh, brand awareness and reach, just getting your identity and your brand and your image out there in front of as, as many people as possible so that they're aware, they've got that top of mind awareness that you exist. Then you've got app promotion, which is specifically uh, tied into getting people to download and install an app. And then you've got uh, create a campaign without a goals guidance. Now, this is not really advised unless you're a little bit more advanced and you know Google ads like the back of your hand. It's best to choose one of these presets uh, when you're starting out here. So we're going to say we're going after sales. OK, we want people to buy. We'll stick with the example from the previous module. Let's say we're selling a diabetes related product. We want people to buy that product, click through and, and purchase. Now, for this module, all we really care about is search. Display, shopping, video, smart ads, discovery ads, these are all really great. There's a whole lot of potential here inside of the Google Ads uh, universe. But we're going to focus on search ads, which means literally those things that look like search results at the very top of the search results page, but they say ad or sponsored right underneath them. Now, what we're focusing on for reaching our goal is going to be website visits. Let's say we're doing e-com. We're not actually looking for people to show up at a physical address. We're not looking for people to you know, call our business. and We're not looking for app downloads. So for this, we'll put in our website, which I've just made this up, diabetesbegone.com. We'll hit continue. I don't know if that's a real website or not. And here we have an option under networks to choose just search or search with a little bit of display network, which will basically take your textual ads and display them in the place of display network ads around the internet. Uh, we're going to turn that one off. It has its merits, but we're trying to stay nice and simple and focus just on search engine result pages uh, for this example that we're doing. Uh, locations to target, let's say United States and Canada. Okay, if we wanted to, we could really drill down. We could uh, do some geo-targeting, use radiuses and, you know, put pins in the map and then that sort of thing. States, cities, uh, we really, really get very refined here, but we're just going to go with North America here. Okay, now United States and Canada. Um, we're going to go with uh, English as our language. We're going to deselect French. Okay, um, I think it automated, uh, automatically went with French because we chose Canada, and that's one of the, the main languages up there. Uh, audiences. Um, we don't have existing audiences in this scenario. Okay, if you did have audiences, you could incorporate those into your ad campaign in various ways, um, and that's based on you know, retargeting pixels and audiences that, you, that you've built and customized and saved in the past. Since we're kind of starting from scratch, we're going to pretend we don't have any audiences, and we're just going to, you know, attract our our audience and our our target market to our website to buy our product for the first time from scratch. Now it's important to understand that this here is a monthly figure under budget. So what this means is on average you'll spend this each day based on the total that's spent over the course of a month. Does that kind of make sense? So if you put 10 here, you could be seeing numbers like $20 per day some days and $5 a day other days. But it will average out to this amount per day total by the end of a month. OK, so just keep that in mind when you're uh, setting your budget and don't be surprised if this actually fluctuates up and down um, from one day to the next. Now, bidding, you can choose multiple options for what you want to focus on. Uh, conversions is recommended because that's the most important thing. You want people to take a specific action, right? And the best way to uh, actually gauge this is to ensure that you've got your pixels and, and all that good stuff on your websites so your web developer will be given a little snippet of code that you can put on your pages and uh, you want to uh, focus the bidding on people who are most likely to convert 
and successfully take a desired action on your web property rather than just sending clicks to your website. Okay, although that's also an option as well, depending on your goals. Okay, so this campaign is going to use the maximize conversions bid strategy to help you get the most conversions out of your budget, just like it says right there. Now, the next couple options here are a little bit more advanced. You've probably seen these in the results on a Google search engine results page. Um, for example, you've got uh, sub pages underneath a main website result. You've got other pages, you know, for say help or pricing or something like that. Uh, links that you can click on within the ad. Uh, sometimes there'll be a phone number there that you can click on and digitally call someone right there from inside of the ad on the search engine results page. So those are pretty cool. We're not going to mess with those right now, although they are proven, as you can see, uh, to get higher click-through rates when you add these features. But we're going to stay sort of bare bones as we move through this for this example. Now, the next step here is going to be to set up your ad groups with keywords that you're targeting for these search advertising campaigns. Now, we went with diabetesbegone.com, and it actually started uh, pulling keywords uh, based on that domain. Now, the reality is, well, we don't have to look it up, but as you can see, there is no diabetes-related website at that domain, and so instead it's just giving us domain hosting-related stuff that it found when, when it crawled and went to that URL. There's probably one of those uh, parked sites there uh, with the GoDaddy or some other registrar saying, hey, you can buy this domain if you want, or something along those lines. So we don't really want to focus on this too much. In fact, let's get rid of this so that it's no longer considered. Now, let's just type in... Uh, glucose monitor, blood glucose. Let's go with those two keywords first. Now let's try monitor. Let's see what we come up with. So basically, Google is going to be recommending, okay, certain uh, keywords that might result in uh, people, you know, who are looking for your product, finding your product. You can add as many of these as you want to that ad group, and that particular ad group is going to focus on those keywords. You could also create a new ad group here if you wanted to. And with that new ad group, you could go out and do your own keyword research inside of the Google Keyword Planner, for example, where you could take words like this, and it'll tell you on average, on a monthly basis, how often people search for those keywords. And you can sort of prioritize which ones you want to stick into which ad group based on that information. But right here, I think we have enough to go with uh, to move forward so let's move on to actually creating the ad itself and this little uh, box right here just means that it wants us to use the uh, most secure version of the url as possible and um, i've got some pre-written copy here that we can stick into the ad and we'll see it change right here as we stick these things into these respective fields And you got to pay close attention to characters here. As you can see, that one's actually a little bit too long. So it's 30 seconds per little segment of your headline here. Uh, 30 words, I should say, excuse me. And they have uh, expanded it quite a bit. Uh, there's a third headline option now. There, there's uh, You can have two description uh, copy lines there if you want. So they have gotten a little bit uh, beefier over the last year or so. But that is pretty much it. That's our successful ad. Okay, you've got the final URL that they're going to be going to, which is displayed in the ad itself, right next to the word ad. You've got the headlines, which are you know, really where you're trying to get people's attention and call people out in the blue letters there. And you've got the description underneath. As you can see, it looks very much like a search engine result. This is the desk desktop version. It looks just like a search engine result, uh, except the word ad is right there, and uh, you're paying money to make sure that people actually see it instead of having it down on page, you know, 5001. So we'll hit save and continue here, and we'll hit save, and this will bring us to our summary page where we can have a look at all of the uh, different data about our campaign and confirm that we're okay with everything and that we're ready to go forward. We would hit continue to campaign, and then basically our ad would be live, from which point on we can... Uh, analyze and, and uh, assess which keywords are performing best and remove some and focus more on the ones that are performing better, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, monitor, you know, items like your average cost per click as well as your conversion rates. And uh, it's a good thing to keep an eye on in the early days so you can make sure that your ad is shaping up to produce the results and the return on investment um, 
that you're hoping to get out of uh, putting money into Google Ads. Now, in the next module, we're going to be revisiting Google Ads, but this time for banner ads after we've gone through the process of creating a banner ad creative.